Hey, Amen. How many of you ready for the word? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we got a special. We're going to have Minister Joe, uh, Minister uh, Lashonda, and myself. We're going to do a message today. And for what it's doing us concerning what we're going to be dealing with the rest of the month to the breach. And each person has an assignment with a subject concerning a breach that they chose that they want to talk about. So at this time, I want everyone you will please stand. We're going to do this expeditiously. I want you to put your hand towards Minister Joe. Say, Minister Joe. Minister Joe. Preach the word. Preach the word. Minister Joe. Minister Joe. Preach the word. Preach the word. Let the anointing flow through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stop the demonic spirits that comes to our mind, Lord Jesus. 
to hurt others, Father God, to think bad things about others, Lord Jesus. Lord, so continue, Lord Jesus, to keep Satan under us, Lord Jesus, to keep us, keep him away from us as we think beautiful things, Lord Jesus, and think of godly things of, uh, as you give us to think of, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone in here today that came out to hear the word today about sealing the breach. But we have to start with sealing the breach in our mindsets first before we can seal it anywhere else. Amen. And we just thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Beautiful word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. I saw Minister uh, LaShonda to stand up and get in position. Bring forth the word God has given her. Amen. I want everyone, if you will, one more time, stand up and point your hand towards her. And Peter, I can minister to Shonda. Preach the word. Minister to Shonda. Preach the word. Let the anointing flow through you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
So keep trusting in the Lord to make a way for you because he will make a way for your family, your home. He will, the Lord will bless your bloodline if you keep trusting in him because other than that, the devil will come in and sin will be in the camp. You know what I'm saying? We don't want no sin in the camp. You know, that's why I rebuke every day. The devil got to go. I ain't got time for this mess. You want the kids want to act up? Oh, well, let me see if we got to pray. Every time we get in the car, we pray and seek the Lord's face because there's something that we need to do. We have to trust in the Lord because he, he, he keeps the structure in your home. It, when you begin to seek his face and pour your heart out to him, God will show you something that's great and mighty. I mean, so you have to begin to surrender your all to him. You have to begin to give him your heart and believe that he will heal you, set you free and do whatever you have to do. Seal the breaches in your life. You know, he will seal every breach in your life if you begin to give your heart and mind to him. <clears throat> I know this for a fact because when I was going through that one time, you know, I wanted to do what I wanted to do and I let the devil come on in and, you know, just tear some stuff up. But, you know, uh, it's like this. When a, once a breach is manifested in your life, that's when an unopened portal appears in your life and we grant the enemy access in the vacant areas of our minds that are not filled with the things from the Spirit of the Lord. I mean, when, when you let the devil in, you, you got to get the devil out. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Out your home, out your mind, yeah. whatever you, you encounter, the things that you're going through, you have to rebuke that devil and believe that God will heal you and set you free. Or else you're going to be in the same, you know, state of mind or whatever situation you're going through over and over again. You're gonna, uh, it's going to be repetitious every time. So you have to begin to give every all your situations to the Lord and believe that God will heal you and deliver you and set you free. Um, but when I began to give my whole heart and mind to the Lord, that's when um, things just fell off my life. And, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't fornicating no more. I wasn't doing the things that I wanted to do. You know, I had to get delivered and set free like anybody else. So we have to give our heart and mind to Jesus. He will bless you and set you free. But we have to seal the breaches in our life. We have to uh, give, give it all to God because he will heal you. He will deliver you. You know, he will set you free. Hallelujah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but like he said earlier, when the structure, when the breaches uh, open to come on in, when situations open to happen in your life, uh, it happens like you, and through your mindset, if you're if your mindset is not set free, if you're not um, healed, delivered, and um, giving your situations to the Lord, then that's when you allow the devil to come in, you know, and, and you know, just come on in and tear your life up and have you going through different situations. But um, I know the, the main thing about it is obedience. If you be obedient to God, he will show you great and mighty things, you know. He, 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 he will give you just what you need. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. You have to be obedient to what God tells you to do in order to keep the structure in your life. Um, but it never would have been altered if I would have stayed obedient and listened to the voice of the Lord. You know, but you just have to close the door to sin, seal the breaches in your life, um, and just stay obedient to what the Lord, keep the Lord's commandments every day, and um, just live your life according to the will of God. You have to do what you have to do, you know. And, and not just let the devil come in and just tear you down. He'd be like, oh, I'm not worthy of whatever case it may be. You have to trust in him, you know. You have to trust in him. Give him your, your heart and mind. And you have to also change your heart posture in this whole situation. Because if you don't change your heart posture, the devil will come in and tear you down. Like we said earlier, he will come in and tear you down and make you think you're not worthy of whatever it is. But you are worthy of everything that God has in store for you. So keep on trusting in him and giving him your mind and heart. But people need to change their heart posture so that there won't be breaches and generations has come. So that's why I want to ask, where is your heart posture in, in your situation that you're going through? Are you really giving it to the Lord like you need to do? Are you really um, just casting all your care on him, trusting in him, and knowing that he will do exceedingly and abundantly all that you ask? So, you know, you have to trust in God to do whatever he has to do. But the thing about it, I love about Nehemiah, he didn't give up. He never gave up. I mean, they, they, they did everything in the world to him, you know. They, 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 they was like, well, you know, Nehemiah, you're not worthy of this, that, and the other. And, um, you know, you just want to be king. You want to be the ruler of everything. No, no, Nehemiah said, no, I put my trust in him. I, I'm able to do exceedingly and abundantly all that I was think of. You know what I'm saying? You have to trust in the Lord with your whole heart. 
and give it all to him. You know what I'm saying? And don't give up. Even though, like, when he was trying to build a wall, let me just explain y'all about Nehemiah, how, how he's so powerful. When Nehemiah built the wall, they they must have, they shot every stone that you can shoot at him. I mean, it was like, you you know, you, you ain't gonna be able to build this wall, but he went to the, he went to the, um, the king and was like, king, I need this money, I need this different things to build this wall. Are you gonna be able to help me? And, and, and the king did. The king helped. Then he finally got followers to help him and to do things that he had to do. But guess what? He didn't give up. He held on to the promises of the Lord. He knew that God would make a way for him. He trusted in the Almighty. You know what I'm saying? He knew that God would make a way for him and, and, and build this wall. But he, well, the main thing about it is, he said, I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. He can, you know, if you believe in him, if you believe that God will help you build whatever you got to build in your life, he will do it. And keep the, uh, and, and the main thing is to seal the breaches in your life so God can come in your life and bless you and make you over, make you new, make you, you know what I'm saying, make you bright. Whatever case you have to do, you have to trust in him because he will do what he have to do for you. So keep trusting the Lord and keep believing that God will seal the breaches in your life so you won't have different situations with your, in generations in your family, you know, people won't be, you know, going through different situations. You'll be trusting in God with your whole heart and believing that God will heal your family, your generation, and the future to come. So, amen. That's my message. Believe in God for all things because he's able to do it. And I just want y'all to know that he will bless you like never before. Hallelujah, the man that you begin to surrender your all to him and give your whole heart and mind to him. Truly walk under the unction of the Holy Ghost and believe God for your healing. Amen. In Jesus' name, he will do it. Amen. Unmovable, 
always abound in the work of the Lord. And I, I want us to stand as I go into the word of prayer, and then I'll continue what God has given me. Father, we thank you for your presence right now. We thank you for the anointing flowing in this place, oh God. We thank you for every person that is purpose to be here, God, that you will speak to their hearts, God, by your word that have just been spoken in your continuation. And so I bring the close to the message today, oh God, that it will bring a change in all of our hearts and conviction to our lives to seal the breach and allow you, God, to repair the foundation of our hearts and our lives, oh God, and cut off the generation of curses, even the bloodline of curses in Jesus' name. And we thank, oh God, that we shall receive healing, deliverance, and victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The scripture says, uh, be steadfast on the move, always upon the work of the Lord. You know, as I was studying this passage of scriptures this week, dealing with Nehemiah, it's very interesting. I'm going to read the first six verses again as I did on last week. And I tell you, so much to learn about Nehemiah when you really search the scriptures and begin to have an open heart to receive from the Holy Spirit. God will begin to minister to you about your life. All week long, God has been in my spirit about the breaches. And one thing God spoke to me this morning is a communicational breach. There's a communicational breach in the body of Christ when it comes to God. You know, so my subject today. I'm going to continue with the subject, the power of the breach, in addition to the structural and the generational and the unstoppable. Because so much is going on in the body of Christ. And as I was saying this week, God, God began to remind me, he said, read this scripture again. It said, now it came to pass when Sabalit and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, that there was no breach left therein. You hear what I just said? After the enemy heard, they didn't see it for themselves just yet, but they heard that we had built a wall and there was no breach left therein. Though at the time I had not set the doors upon the gates, that Sambalit and Gersh Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Oh No. Say, Oh No. Oh, no. It ain't happening. Amen. But they brought, but they thought to do me mischief. And, and, and this is what the enemy does. God spoke to me this morning. I talked the time all night long about this message. It was just in my spirit so deep. And I said, God, what is it? He kept saying communication. That a communication of breach in the church. And God began to speak to me. And I had a dream. This dream was kind of crazy. Because I was at a church, now I was doing some work on the outside of the church, repairing some breaches. And as I began to till the Lord the soil and do the things in the ground, then all of a sudden I wandered away from the foundation of the church and went into a field, and there was this huge python. And it was it was a, a yellowish color. And he began to come up out the ground and go back into the ground and begin to come back out. And then all of a sudden he turned and started coming towards me. I went another direction. There was a blue python. And that one was bigger than the other one. And it turned and started going around to circle me, to come at me. Then there was a third, there was a white one. And the white one was bigger than both of those. And as they began to encamp around the bow to cause fear to come upon me, God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Guess what came to my mind? The Leviathan spirit. The Leviathan spirit is a three-headed dragon, which is a serpent. And that dragon creeps into the house of God to destroy God's people from receiving the truth of God's word. Not only does it creep in, it comes in with heresies, false doctrine, lies from the enemy to pervert the gospel. All that came to me this morning in a dream. So as I got up, I said, Lord, I thank you. Because as you begin to reveal to me about the breaches, I had my prayer line this morning for the men. And every other Sunday we devoted to just nothing but prayer. But this morning, God spoke to me and said, I want you to do it differently. 
Because as we deal with structures, we deal with being unstoppable, we deal with generational curses in the bloodline, God says, have the men to identify what is their breach. That's what God spoke to me. I said, okay, God. I said, God is giving me instruction this morning. So normally we have someone come forward with a word, you know, bring up an encouraging word. But God says today it's going to be different. And he says, because too many men, and I'm talking about men, they come into the house of God and lift up dirty hands before God. They come in and out of the house of God with a heart saying, I love you, but your actions show it differently. Then God said this morning, he said, men are with alcoholism, they were drug addiction, they were love. The young lady just said, with a lust spirit creeps into your heart. Not only that, God gave a revelation a few days ago concerning James 1, 1, 14. They talk about God took the man with evil, but men are tempted with it drawn away by their own what? Desire. Yes. But then he goes on to the next verse and said, when desire Lust. Then he goes on and said, and when lust is matured, that means you got an adult lustful spirit in your heart. Your lust have grew up. Your lust have became an adult in your life. And your lust spirit comes with other attributes of the spirit of the enemy, with pride and arrogance, haughtiness and sinfulness and iniquity. All these things because you let lust be conceived in your heart. Check this out. It's not that all the lust coming into your heart. The problem is when it gets control of your heart. Because the enemy is going to tempt you with lust every day of your life. As a born again believer, he has a right to tempt you. You know what I'm saying? He has the right to tempt you. So he's going to tempt you with lust. So when I read this passage of Nehemiah, it says, and, 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 you know, after the set of uh, Nehemiah and the catch of Raven, and the rest of it's heard. You know, I went back to look up these names. And this was kind of fascinating. Nehemiah is a Hebrew name with an origin meaning God has comforted. God has, and I said, look at this. In the beginning of Nehemiah, chapter 1, Nehemiah being a cup there who has to test the cup that comes to the king. If anyone would bring a drink to the king, he had the right to test to make sure you weren't poisons in it. Yeah. So when he tested the cup, then he bring it for the king. But this particular incident, he came before the king sad. And I looked at him, I said, why was he sad? And I found some research. Nehemiah is an Israelite who comes from the city of Shohan, where Mordecai and Queen Esther lived. He worked for the next king, King Artaxerxes. King uh, Texas, King of Texas is a good king who gave Ezra all the money to, uh, to the back to, to build Jerusalem and to fix Jehovah's temple. But Ezra did not build the broken down walls of the city. All this goes together. Because you find out, not understand the king that's present, you understand the king before. So when God came to like this, he's a nearby, it's a chief cupbearer for King Artaxerxes. This means that he served the king, his king, his wife, and make sure that no one tries to put the king. And it's a very important job. But check this out. Sabbath means bramble bush. Enemy in secret. Come on. Sabbath, bramble bush. An enemy in secret. I said, ain't that a song? Because that's what it came for to the messages in secret. Because they didn't come themselves at first, but they sent messengers to go tell them coming out of the wall. But then you go on, Tobiah, the Hebrew origin, means God is good. But yet, his heart was following God is good. We have a name that identifies Jesus that stands on our hearts every now and then, but yet we think our preachers. We still have a structural breach. We have a mindset breach. We have a heart breach. We have a life breach. God said, your life has been breached by the enemy. 
Because, check this out, this is going to blow your mind. All because of lust crept into your heart. When lust crept in our heart, it comes in with other attributes of the enemy to filtrate your entire life, to destroy your structure. Check this out. When you have a house, and a lot of people got a house, they're going to identify with this. Right? When I had a house back in the day. When there is a crack in your foundation, and you have to tend to that crack, what's going to happen? The storms come, the rain comes, the wind blows, that crack begins to spread, and your foundation gets wider, wider, and wider. Now you have rodents coming to your house, you got ants coming to your house, you got spirits coming to your house. Why? Because the foundation's been breached. So when God gave this to me, he said, you know what happens when the enemy breaches your foundation as a believer? We know that God is a masonry. We know he has all the tools and equipment to repair your foundation. But what we do, we revert back to our comfortable things. Then when God told me this morning, I say it all the time, the secret treasure chest in our heart. Because a lot of people have a secret treasure chest in their heart when you conceal your secret sins. And when the time is feasible, you feel vulnerable, what you do? Go back to your treasure box, put out that secret sin, so the last little spirit begins to mature your life and it begins to bring forth spiritual death. Because it steals your anointing. It kills your desire. It kills your passion for God. Why? Because of the structural breach. So then when you got the unstoppable, then he says, you know what? I'm going to stop Joe today. I don't want him to bring that message. It may be short, it may be brief, but I don't want to bring that one. Because somebody going to hear that word, it might change their life. If he don't want you to hear these words today, he don't want you to get to the place in your mindset, I teach him out about the mind, because that's the greatest attack if he doesn't believe it. He gets right here in your filthy thinking. And he gets, comes in there and he brings all his cohorts in your mind. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Those are the three sins that are said in 1 John chapter 4 is in the world. Why? Because the enemy knows those are the passions of the flesh. The flesh desires to be lustful. But the problem comes in when we allow it to have the power over us. God said, Jesus said, Luke 10, 19, I love that scripture. Said, behold, pay attention, look out. I gave you power. He didn't say some power. He said a little power. He said, I gave you power over all. All these what? Ain't no limit in all. But we live in it all because we, we live in ourselves by trusting God's word. So when the enemy comes in and God says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy and that nothing shall be able to hurt you, what we do? We give the enemy our power. Amen. I start watching pornography. I start going back and drinking. I start going to the clubs. I start fornicating. I start adulterating. I start lying. I start backbiting. I start cheating. I start hating on folk. I start doing all these different things that the flesh wants me to do. Why? Because the flesh is prone to do evil. Yeah. The flesh is prone to do evil. And when you don't recognize the spirit when it comes, guess what it does? When you get a structural breach, it don't affect just you. It affects the bloodline. Because that structural bridge connects to everyone connected to you. And when it comes into your heart, that mature sin that grew up in your life, it carries on to the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. Why? Because it came from generation before. If you don't check your bloodline to find out what type of sin was in my bloodline through the reason why I'm dealing with spirit right now in my life, this type of devil in my life, you know what? I found out pornography is in the bloodline. Yes. Drug addiction in the bloodline. Alcohol is in the bloodline. Yes. And when God revealed this to me, he said, you know what? You don't have to keep living in it. You choose to live in it. Amen. <laughs> we have to wake up, church, and pay attention because the devil He's looking for whoever is available to devour. 
Hey, come into your house through your children. Come into your house through the radio, through the television. I call it any other Babylonian box, soapbox. Then you come right through that thing that captivates your attention the most. Get in your easy chair, you sit back, look at everything that appeases your flesh on that television. And that thing pulls you further and further from consecration, further and further from fasting, further and further from praying and seeking God's face. It gets you to the place where you're comfortable. And when God gave it to you like this, he says, we have to recognize the spirit. So Nebuchadnezzar, the king, king, king of Babylon, destroyed the wall of Jerusalem in 586 B.C., 150 years before he knocked down the wall and burned the gates. This happened before Nehemiah's time. All this stuff happened. And because of this, the Israelites did not build the wall again when they first came home from Babylon. Captivity. They heard about the city being destroyed, the walls being destroyed, the gates being burned, but they didn't do nothing about it, so they left themselves vulnerable for the enemy coming in and out. We do it all the time. We leave ourselves open game for the enemy. Okay, devil, come into my house. I don't have no defense set up. I don't have no structure that's not sealed. So you come any way you want to into my house. And then he does just that. He comes in and exits as he chooses out of your house because you gave him access. The walls are still in ruin and 140 years later when Nehemiah came to Jerusalem. Upon the, the, the great wall, it said upon the rings of that wall of Jerusalem, it said the walls were down and destroyed. Along with the gates being burned out, Nehemiah cried. That's why his heart was heavy. When the king said, Nehemiah, he said, uh, you don't look the same today. Something seems wrong with you. He said, what is it? He said, my heart is, is heavy because the walls of my father, where they lie, have been torn down and the city has been breached. Yes. So because of this, we got to get to the place where we recognize when the enemy comes in. And so they said, and I sent messages with them saying, I am doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Will thou leave it and come down to you? Yet they said to me four times after this story, and I answered them after the same manner. Then Sabalat, his servant, uh, uh, and his Sabalat, then he sent his servant unto me like, in like manner in the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein is written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gaspu says it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which, which, for which call that thou built the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. So they're trying to say, Nehemiah, you want to be the king. So they're taunting him. And that's another point God gave me. When you recognize that there's some breaches in your life, and you begin to slam down the ceiling, the enemy going to taunt you. Yeah. He's going to come five times, like he did here. He came five times yeah. with letters and trying to threat and trying to get them to feel it out of feel like they ain't worthy, feel like you ain't good enough. I want to destroy your character. I want to destroy your, 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 your mindset. I want to stop you in your trap because you ain't worthy. Yeah. But when you know that you know that you know that you know that I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, it doesn't matter what the enemy does to you, it doesn't matter what they say to you, it doesn't matter how they taunt you, I'm not coming down off the wall. If God has the power and the ability to seal the breaches in your life, then all you got to do is be willing to say, yes, Lord, have your way in my life. And I guarantee God will do what he promised. He'll seal the breach. He'll take his masonry tools. He'll take that concrete mixture. He begin to smear over that breach in your life. He begin to close up the gap, paint over it, make it look beautified again. Why? That's what he does to our life. He takes the broken pieces. He put it back together again. He is sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And he come you in his presence in his glory that the power of God will radiate through your life. Yes. But you got to be willing. Yes. One thing about God, he doesn't force himself on nobody. Says, if you will, I will come in 
and sup with you and dine with you and you with me because I am the good shepherd. I'm the king of glory. I'm the everlasting father. I'm the prince of peace. I'm the living word. I'm everything you need. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm coming to you. Yeah, Lord. And I'll make everything be all right. Yeah, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's what God gave me this morning. Allow God to see the preach. Don't hold back anymore. Matter of fact, you need to be praying for the rest of this week. God reveals me what my preachers are. Yes. And I guarantee when you ask God to show you where is the preacher in my heart? Yes. What is the God that I'm holding on to that's not of you? Guess what he'll do? I'm going to be with you. He'll die for me. I'm going to pray like seven days a week. Every time I start doing a prayer line seven days a week, guess what? The preachers were exposed. Confess your fault one to another that you what may be healed. You cannot be healed with a breach in your heart. All right, all right. When God begins to reveal it, He said, Now I got you in a place where I can send the anointing. Yeah. And the anointing will flow through you yeah. to heal and deliver and set you free. Yeah. So won't you stand with me as I come to the close? of this message. Now I want you to pray this prayer with me today. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, reveal to me what my preachers are. And I ask you to come into my heart right now and expose them that I would no longer hide behind the breach but I will allow you to fill in the gap and to close it permanently in my life in my heart and in my mind now forgive me for my sin of the breach and wash me clean with the blood of the lamb and I thank you for cleansing me and now deliver me and set me free that I can walk and abide in the liberty that Christ paid the price for that my life will be free from this day forward in Jesus name Amen Amen I'm also glad to give God praise
I like what Pastor Charles was saying also in his very powerful things that your lust has grown up. Lust can be many different things. You don't necessarily got to be you know, sexual lust or whatnot. It can be overeating. It can be a whole lot of different things. But God is able to do a seemingly and abundantly of all that we can ask and think. I'm asking God for some things for myself also. And God will never give you a word unless you at first have to become convicted by yourself. Once that word has convicted your spirit, that word will manifest like never before in the atmosphere of God's people. Everyone standing.
God, as you begin to heal our bodies and our mind, God, we wholeheartedly surrender to you. Somebody say, I yield to your will, God. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare. Come on, say it again. I declare that in the name of Jesus, I am healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In Jesus' name. Now give God your God is when y'all leave this place today. That y'all leave it here with a blessing. Y'all leave it here with a miracle in your hands. But before I do the benediction, I'm open the doors of the church. If you're not, if, you're not, if you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home and you want this to be your church home, the doors of the church. Thank you.